Okay, good afternoon. I'm going to give my feedback on this uh, paper here. Does the depth at which a seed is planted subsequently affect the growth of a plant? And I like that you said in grams here, but uh, first of all, whenever you're going to put a unit, uh, you don't need to write in grams. You can just put a parentheses G because we know the unit uh, as scientists is a gram. Plus in here almost can be abbreviated as inches. So that's something you want to avoid. Um, and it's not necessary to put the unit here. I mean, it doesn't hurt anything, but it's, it's a research question, so we don't have to know all the specifics yet. Um, but does the depth at which, and especially here when you don't write what unit the seeds are going to be measured in, but then you put over here that it's the mass, uh, just another example of redundancy. Uh, but otherwise, I like your sectioning here, how you have even spaces here. you got your paragraphs consistently sized. Oh, it looks like you got a lot of research here. Hypothesis and explanation is nice. Uh, because you're leaving a space between the titles here and the, uh, uh, what's it called, the titles and all this, I would probably give a little bit more of a gap between these different sections here, just to kind of make sure the sections are stand out as to your eyes. I do like here how you got your constants bolted, just as I asked you to do. I would recommend, however, you put these in parentheses or embolden them, just to make the title here stand out from the description next to it. Otherwise, I look at the rest of this here, uh, materials list relatively okay and we get to the procedure I like that you have some type of a description I'll see if this makes sense to me in a moment the only thing I'd probably advise you on in the procedure is to probably try to find a way to break this up into several different sections here uh, like have a setup a actual experiment uh, you know then collecting the data section however you want to break it up but it makes it easier to the eye for us to pull out details on how to do certain things here. Maybe a section on how to repeat each of the following, but either way. Uh, just putting it in a big long list like this might make it a little more difficult uh, to communicate effectively. And if I look at your table without even looking at it, I'm actually looking away from your table, I would expect to see that this has um, a clear um, independent dependent variable and I know what the heck you are doing. So if I look at it now, it appears that you have independent variable depth of the seed beautiful and I like that you put your unit and uncertainty in there so I know the device you are measuring with has a precision of about 0.1 centimeters and your weight here I assume you're using a scale um, I'm not sure where you have a scale that is within a half a gram accuracy but it's entirely possible um, I would hope you have a scale that goes down to 0.01 grams just because seeds and stuff can vary quite a bit in their weight but either way, uh, if it goes half a gram in accuracy, your measurements here would need to go up in increments of half a gram as well. But otherwise, it looks pretty straightforward for the most part. Um, all right, let's go back and take a look at the specifics. The layout in general looks very nice at this point. Plus, it looks like your background has a lot of stuff in it, but let's see what the content is. So how deep you plant these, does that affect the growth of the plant? Uh, before I read this too, let me make a comment that I would expect on something like this. Um, I would expect for something like this, you to have done research on um, seed germination in general, like how do seeds germinate, what does it take, uh, that would definitely be relevant to this germination process. Uh, talk about like the early stages in development, I would expect here for you to investigate in general like soil quality and things like that. What about sunlight exposure? Is that necessary? Like, is the plant trying to get through the surface as fast as it can? Or is it just, do they just grow at general rates? I mean, these are all things relevant to study. But in general, your variables are pretty much related to each other here. Uh, rather than doing something like temperature and growth, where you would have to then look at the physics of temperature. So I think for the most part, as long as you have a good amount of research on there and tie it into any... Uh, uh, benefits to the world and also how this is uh, relevant to you, I think you've got a pretty good chance of doing a good background here. Let's see what you got. You said agriculture is one of the biggest industries in the world, employing over 1 billion people worldwide, generating 2.3 trillion. Let me maximize. Okay, I like that you're making this relevant. You want to maximize their output. This is very good. And I think you've hit the nail on the head there. A very good job connecting this. You talk about working at a local grocery store. I did not know that about you, though, by the way, so I bet you uh, quite a bit of experience with this. You notice they were not all the same length. Some were heavier. Question why? Different technique. This is pretty good here. 
So I would say at this point, you've got probably one point earned on your personal engagement with your lab. So now if we look at the rest of how hard you're working at this and how much you're trying to solve this question, you could probably earn your second point of personal engagement. Otherwise, I like that you're connecting it to the world. It's to study the effect of plant or seed depth on growth. To determine this, we must know the anatomy. Fully developed seeds contain. Okay, this is good. The embryo is part of the seeds. One, two seeds, large amount of storage in the endosperm. This is good. Uh, you know, right here, what it would really help is kind of like in a textbook, have a diagram of some sorts. Um, if you do include one that comes off of a website or somewhere else, make sure you cite it. Or you could just consider making your own uh, diagram of a plant seed or something like that. But this is very relevant, very good. Germination seed, wild sorry, seed coat. Okay, this is pretty good here. Okay, this is very relevant. Um, might have room to even put a little bit more here on the germination process, but I think for the most part, we have a pretty good idea as to what happens. I think really we the biggest thing I can offer you feedback on here is some type of a diagram because clearly seeds have an anatomical structure to them and that would help us correspond with understanding the physiological changes that are taking place. Germination relies on a number of factors. One of these factors is depth. Okay. Um, I'm not sure because here I don't have any citations. How do you know depth is a factor at this point? Um, it could be, I would say it could be a number of factors. At this point, you don't know if depth is. That is how you are trying to see if this is necessarily playing a role. Um, because again, the seeds, maybe they're trying to grow as quick as they can to get out and get sunlight. But then again, maybe they just grow and try to grow leaves regardless of the depth. Do you know for a fact that depth matters? Uh, if you do not know that, then make sure you don't write it as a fact here or include a citation or something where this would have that connection. Planting a seed to success, but the health of seedlings, okay, that's relevant. And too deep, short, may not emerge. Okay, I like that you're connecting why. I want to know at which depth will result in large. Okay, and now you're getting into the radish seed, and only at this point do you identify that you are using a radish seed here. And that's the other thing. I would definitely go off on the radish seed a little bit. Talk about maybe what environment it lives in. Why would it need to emerge or stay in the ground longer? Is it typically buried? What about the reproductive means? Does it put its seed out uh, in such a way where it's going to get buried deep to begin with? Uh, yeah, this would not necessarily have to be a long section, but it would be very relevant for us here to hear a little more about this radish seed. Okay. With that said, you have the germination process taking place here. This is a good um, this is a good diagram. However, by itself, I guess the one thing it is lacking is really a time frame. For a picture that's showing over time, it would be kind of cool to see a description under here about germination and then maybe two weeks under here written or something like that. And this is not a knock on your paper, but if this was my paper, I'd probably, since this is a... Uh, uh, this is a diagram, so I'd probably put it in the middle of the paper. That way I don't. I know it's not an entire section. It's part of the section above here that's on another page, okay? Plus, I see this germination thing, and I'm not sure if it's, like I said, part of a new section or it's being included with a hypothesis. So although I know what you're writing, I'm just trying to make your paper stand out and have better science communication on it. Otherwise, looks good so far. You've got those rooms for uh, improving there. Let's go to the hypothesis. If you increase the depth, Growth will decrease. This should happen to increase depth. We'll have less room. Increased depth. The roots will have less room to grow, resulting. Okay, my only curious point at, at this point here, and maybe you said it above, but again, I did read through this fast here, and I am multitasking when I talk and I'm trying to understand. But you say here they will have less room to grow. Well, the earth is pretty deep. I mean, unless you have bedrock below there, but maybe the soil is different. Maybe the temperature of the soil gets is changes at different depths. I mean, if you think about I mean, I used to dig holes all the time in my yard when I was a child, and I found out that when I would dig holes, um, when I would dig holes in my yard, uh, it would get colder deeper down, and that's just because you know it was much more insulated. Maybe that would prevent the growth too. That's not talked about here or explored in your background, so those are things relevant. But you're potting these in plant or in, in potting jars, so that temperature should not be a variable here. So again, something to think about. In your lab here, you are suggesting the roots having a structure. I would almost strongly recommend you use a deep structure or something 
um, to give roots those chances so that is not impeding on how close they are to the bottom of your potting tray or, or soil or something. But you know you can obviously only do what you can do too. Variables. Depth at which the seeds are planted, that is very good. What unit are you using to measure this depth? Okay, And you got the mass. I love that you... Oops, alarms are going off in the school. I love that you put grams here, mass of the plant. But again, you want to have a unit after here. And by the way, what are the depths? You remember on your table, you had those increments listed. We want to see these here after the independent variable. All right, I said before, I love your constants, amount of water. Okay, these are good here. Um, I'm going to read through these more thoroughly yet later, but I would say you got a pretty good sized list. Let's see what your procedure says, though. And overall, it looks pretty good with your materials. All right. Wet a paper towel until it is damp, not soaking wet. Okay, this is hard to control, but I'd say you at least attempted to describe that, so that's pretty good. Lay the radish seeds out, paper towel, so they are separated, not touching. This may be good. Very good. Okay, wrap in Ziploc bag, warm location. Okay, this is good as long as you identify they are in the same place or the same temperature to make sure that is the same. Allow the seeds germinate for two to four days. Um, my only thing here is I think I made that comment to you that it takes two to four days, but this is where you're going to want to justify why did you pick two to four days? Um, did you read? Obviously, I told you, but make sure you maybe even if you look up a lab or something online that people are doing with plants, justify why did you select two to four days for germination? Um, and also, I would not say two to four days now that I think about it, because that's a very vague procedure. It almost is like you would pull the seeds out, some of the seeds out at two days and some of them at four. I would just pick a set period of time, and that is when you are going to take the seeds out later. Um, or, regardless of what number of days you pick, Make sure you, even if you justify by saying, I didn't know where to start, but two to four, and, and again, this is in your background research, but you could say something along the lines of germination time was selected to be two days. I do not know the exact amount, but this was, this was estimated as a reasonable amount of time for the water to seek in the helium of the seed. I mean, you can even say something like that, but as long as you're explaining why you just picked that arbitrary number, that would be justified, okay? Lay out the planting pots into a large tarp. I assume this is to keep the dirt from getting everywhere, but evenly distribute layered potting soil in each of the five pots. Okay, this is good. And I really like that you're considering this here. You don't want your own contaminants falling in the soil. So not even just skin cells. Um, I honestly, got to be honest, I probably would not have done that myself, but that's pretty good to think about that there. Because I didn't even think about that initially. I maybe with some thought, but I do applaud you for throwing that in there. Place the seeds at five centimeter intervals. Um, my only thing here I'm thinking about is if this is in a potting soil, usually these are circular, and if you place these in five centimeter intervals, um, again, like I said, when you're planting seeds, the best way to do it is to put them circular. So maybe you have a better way to describe, maybe I'm just not thinking of it right now, but. If I'm not thinking clearly about this division here, then maybe that has to do with your communication and something you probably want to focus on a little bit more, or maybe a diagram to help my brain understand this. Again, you're not just competing with me, but your, your moderator who lives overseas who is going to be judging your paper as well, okay? All right, use plant labels. Lab okay, this is a good label. To label the pot here. Uh, water each to this amount of water each day. Watering can to each amount of one inch for a week. Okay, my only issue with this is you have one inch, which is a imperial unit, and then you use a metric unit here. Make sure you're using metric units. The other thing to throw out is this is a very uh, arbitrary number, 2.431 milliliters. In fact, you would, this is a thousandth of a milliliter. That is an extremely tiny, tiny amount. Um, in fact, two milliliters in general is almost no amount of water. So, uh, I don't know if you're familiar how much a liter is, but a thousandth of a liter is very, very little water at all. Um, and then to do a thousandth of that is even is microscopic. So uh, be very careful with this. I'm assuming you got this because you tried to convert it from something and then converted it from imperial, but that's where you want to be careful. Again, regardless of how you're doing your lab, please be specific on this. Rotate each plant in an ordered manner to assure the receiver. I'm not sure, so I assume the diagram here has to do with your rotation, 
but without an annotation next to it, I'm not sure what I'm, I assume you're rotating it because you're moving these around, then you're bringing it back to the beginning, but without an annotation, I'm not sure what this is describing, I'll be honest. I was hoping at this point this would make a little more sense. Where's the sun at? Where's the light at? Uh, and the arrow's going in both directions here, so I'm not sure. I guess I, that's something I think you should just take an extra look at here, okay? So the communication at this point is, it's got some room for improvement here. Label each side of the pot one through four with a sticky note, rotate along the rotation diagram. Again, that's where the communication comes into play. Um, after 21 days, carefully extract. And honestly, for this point, I'd probably put this above the diagram instead of after it, because you want it to kind of be sequentially seen. But regardless, after 21 days, extract Spread a sprout from one pot, one IV at a time to avoid, that's good, avoiding mixing with contamination from the other ones. And again, why did you pick 21 days or three weeks? Not that that's not a bad time, I'm just saying, why did you pick that? Now, if it's your background research, you had talked about that, I would certainly, and you had looked at three weeks as a good amount of time for these plants to fully grown. Like right here, you talk about the 21 days, but right here's where we really want to know, why did you pick 21 days? So make sure you justify that, okay? All right. Remove as much dirt as possible from the roots. Uh, this is a tricky part, and not that this is bad, but try to come up with a decent method as how to do this, because as you'll see with a radish seed, which has a very fibrous root, this is very hard to do without damaging the root. So please take a moment and think of a, you know, it's never gonna be perfect, but please try to think of a more specific method here to control your experiment, okay? Place each spot separately from one another. Record the data, wipe the scale, this is good. Of course, you do want to consider with scales, when you wipe them, they tend to decalibrate, so be careful with that. And repeat until all are extracted and weighed. All right, so far, so good. Just the communication aspect is something to consider. And then if you look here, your data table, everything looks good, mean and standard deviation. So, so far, I think this is pretty good and specific. And here's the depth. Um, the only thing I might critique at this point is if you're measuring how deep something is, honestly, like, even though you have a ruler with increments of 0.1 centimeter, the reality is a seed is twisted in different directions, seeds are different thickness. It's going to be really hard to determine what, it, especially with soil, you know, soil's kind of puffy, it's never a flat surface. To get 0.1 centimeters is going to be really specific. I would almost argue this is going to be accurate to within 0.5 centimeters. That's just my personal opinion on this. Otherwise, I hope that helps you out somewhat. You've got a good skeleton on this paper and actually a good amount of meat on this too, but you've got definitely some more room to, you know, to really hang some more uh, places of improvement. Otherwise, good luck with your lab and let me know if you need assistance further. Okay, this next one here, we're gonna research how do different fertilizers affect the growth of a tomato plant. So far, I like the research question, different fertilizers, very relevant, and the growth of a tomato plant. Uh, first of all, I like your layout of your research paper because you have a nice, clear, bold heading on each of these here with your descriptions all indented. I like this, although you don't have a space between these, so I would probably make sure you do that. But then you have a gap here and not here, so there's a little inconsistencies with your formatting, but I, that's an easy fix. So far, good. I like that you have this here. I get into your procedure. I love that you created subsections for different parts of your um, for different parts of your report. Although I did notice here, looking, looks like you got the setup and all of its stuff, and then you have the experiment kind of sub-indented over underneath this. You, I'm assuming you probably want this over here, otherwise it looks like it's um, outlined underneath the setup. And when I look at your table, I should be able to see a clear defined independent and dependent variable and know exactly what I'm measuring. Um, and I have to say, unfortunately, this is the part where I guess I'm I gotta say, at this point, the table, I have no idea what is being studied, uh, I re or what is being recorded. You put height in inches here, but my first issue is, remember, you must use metric, not imperial units. So inches is not going to work. Second of all, if I go back to the top, you got growth of a tomato. Okay, that might have been another paper I was reading. So we have the height in inches. You're gonna wanna change this to um, centimeters. And second of all, um, I would put height and then put this in parentheses, CM. 
when you put in inches, in is a unit too. I know what you mean, but it is the abbreviation for inches. And so you want to be careful with that, okay? Um, I guess I'm not sure what your dependent variable is and what your independent variable is because you talked about different fertilizers up here. And I don't see anywhere for me to identify fertilizers. And you're measuring growth of a plant. But I'm assuming you're measuring growth over different days. But this is where I, I really am not sure what, if you're sure what you're going to record exactly. So this is where you're going to want to refer to the manual to see specifics on how to properly identify all this. But let's go ahead and, that's your layout of your paper. Let's go ahead and take a look at the sections here. Now before I read your background, because I haven't read your background yet, you're talking fertilizers and growth of a tomato plant. For this, I would expect, first of all, when I look at your background in a second here, I would expect to see something along the lines of, uh, of course, how, what drew you to this? How does this personally engage you, this lab? And likewise, how can this improve the world, your results? What can this tell us that'll make the world a better place? How will your science be relevant to the world? So those are things that we want to consider. Also, ethical implications. You're talking about fertilizers. So what are the ethics of this? Because we know fertilizers can cause ecological issues. And so these are things we want you to consider in your background. But the main things in your background, I want to know that you've done research on a tomato plant. What can you tell us about a tomato plant and how it grows and how it's farmed? And likewise, uh, what about the growth of plants in general? You need to show us research on this. Likewise, fertilizers. We need to know what the heck you're going to choose for fertilizers. What is in them? What do fertilizers typically have? What does one brand have different from another brand of fertilizers? They are required by the EPA to list the ingredients in the fertilizers. I've actually seen fertilizers, so when you get them at the store, you can actually see this. So this here is where you do want to make sure you research all this. And now when I look at your background, I can tell that it has a very small amount of everything I just said there. So make sure you are investigating these things. We'll see what you have. You said, I chose to do this lab because I really enjoy plants and gardening. Since I will be leaving home soon, I assume you mean for college, I will be able to grow more plants and start my own garden. I'm not sure what uh, college lets you start your own garden, and I'm kind of jealous, to be honest. I wish I had that. With this experiment, I can find the best for, okay, so this fertilizer is used for plants, maybe to maximize their output. I grew up in Baltimore, so gardens weren't really a thing because of the climate and also resources. I didn't know you grew up in Baltimore, but the other thing is, uh, yeah, I mean, I grew up in Michigan, much more farther north, and here, and there's gardens everywhere, so I'm not clear on that, but, you know, that's not necessarily a knock to your paper. Uh, similarly, third of Baltimore lives in a food desert. Um, correct my spelling, I thought desert had one S. Uh, I thought desert had one S to it and dessert had two S's. So I, I, you know, I am multitasking here, but just check me on that one, please. Being able to grow your own food is important and health and wellness. Okay, when you live in a food desert. Um, so I think you're, maybe you're talking about food insecurity. I guess I don't know what a food desert is. I've never heard of this concept, but I assume it's an expression for a food insecure area where food is a little hard to come by or poverty or something. I, I don't know. Uh, again, if I don't know this, then a moderator who lives somewhere else in the world is not going to understand this. So please elaborate on what you mean here. Now, so far you talked about personal engagement here. You got a little bit to clean up there, but to explore affordable okay so all right so up until this point you're doing all personal engagement up until this point this is good i think you've got a few things to tweak on there but i've made my suggestions there uh and then to get into your plants i chose tidy treats tomatoes this is a brand name so make sure you capitalize it as a proper noun and also please make sure you put like a uh trademark logo or whatever next to it just to show us this is a brand name. Maybe put it in italics format just to again show it is a proper noun and it is a name of a brand of tomatoes. But you chose these tomatoes as my plant because they grow by the bunch. Um, I would say they grow very well or something by the bunch is kind of slang. Again you're speaking um, here in the United States with me somebody outside of this country reading this paper might not know what that means and do well in a color. This is relevant, I like this. So I like that you justify your choice of a tomato plant, but just clean up the formatting a little bit there. 
and you say science journals state that healthy ratio of this is correct make the best fertilizers that is correct um, however you don't have any source after this so what are the science journals that say this okay because there are some wacky science journals out there that are not peer-reviewed so we again this is why we always want to include a source and also what does a healthy ratio mean because some fertilizers come in a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one ratio some come in a ten-to-one-to-one -to -one ratio it really just what is a healthy ratio in fact I always have to debate this every year when I uh, go to fertilize my my lawn for example so you got more to elaborate on here but more than anything what fertilizers are you using and what is in them what is the difference between these ratios none of this is elaborated on here um, I would also include a diagram of the tomato plant, its life cycle, whatever, you know, anything to draw your attention and explain that you really have researched fertilizers, how they work and how tomato plants grow and this tomato plant in particular. And this is a decent conclusion here. So please take my advice for all of that. I hope that helps you out a little bit with your background, but you definitely have more to grow there. You hypothesize that different fertilizers will yield different growth rates for tomato plants. Um, I would expect that too, but you got to since you're using different categories and you talked about fertilizers having different ratios i would strongly recommend you don't just say they will make it grow differently well of course they will but let's see here if you can also say fertilizers with um throw in something like fertilizers with a higher nitrogen ratio will grow less or something like or a more even ratio one to one to one will grow more and Regardless of what you hypothesize, please make sure you justify it after this. Now, with this lab here, you could also do a chi-square test, so you are going to, or a t-test. This means you will need to have a null hypothesis and an alternative. And just saying here they will grow different rates is a good null hypothesis. But regardless, we do not have explanation. So you got to have an explanation here. In fact, that's in the heading up there. Okay. And again, you can have multiple hypotheses here, but as long as they don't contradict and make sure you have some type of an explanation here tied into your background. All right, variables, type of fertilizer. Well, what are the fertilizers? We need to know this and you need to list the fertilizers after. Plant growth and again, growth can be measured in many ways. So you're measuring height here, it looks like. So please say the plant growth of height and again do not use inches use cm for centimeters or something else that's metric okay constants and controls this is not supposed to be a, a paragraph this is supposed to be a list a bulleted list please refer to the uh, ia manual that i've published on this where you want a bulleted list where you write what has to be maintained and how do you maintain it okay but you do talk here about See, this is, this is where the communication is going to be a little rough. I need to see a list here to pull out all the specific details. Usually, I make sure you have a pretty good list, and then I really read your procedure. So I'm going to look at your procedure here in just a moment. Okay? Materials list. This may be heavily revised as you complete. Okay, well, this is my part here, so please take that out. Or tiny treat tomato plants. Spots. Okay. Um, what is the watering pot? How big is this watering pot? Um, watering pots vary. Does it matter? Um, different types of fertilizers. You have pots here, but again, how big are the pots? Because doesn't this make relevance for our experiment? Your experiment is not controlled at this point, unfortunately. Okay, let's go to the procedure. Obtain four equally sized pots and fill with three inches of soil. Again, please keep away from inches. Four equally sized pots. Um, again, we need to know how big these are just so we can get a rough idea and make uh, do relevance with this. Label each pot with a letter or number. Um, please don't do one or the other in a science lab. You just straight up tell us, number these, okay? Then the type of fertilizer the plant will receive, okay? Uh, place a tiny treat tomato in each pot and then fill five inches of soil. So I'm not even going to bring up the inches thing again, but it looks like at this point, You've got some soil in there. You're going to place the tiny treat tomato plants in each pot. You, uh, are you meaning the seeds of the plant or the actual tomato? That would be kind of harsh to get this in there. Um, that I guess I'm not sure what you're trying to do here with this. So do you just, yeah, think about what you just said here. Like, are you placing the seeds in there? You said the plant. That would be kind of hard to put in here. 
or place the plants in each pot? Are you only putting one seed in each pot? Water the plants with the same amount of water and place these in the sun. You know it is cold outside, right? Uh, so is, yeah, this might be kind of difficult to grow in this climate, but okay, so we have, there's definitely some issues with control here because if I go to the bottom here, now we're doing the experiment, apply different fertilizers to different plants. Again, which ones are we doing and how much of these fertilizers are you adding? How are you applying the fertilizers? Uh, what about, I mean, do you have to shake the fertilizers ahead of time? Do you have to keep them in a warm climate before you get them? How is it, is there a shelf life on the fertilizers? So it, it has to be like freshly made. Again, these are things you want to consider here than just saying something simple like that. Monitor plant growth. Well, how do I do that? What does that mean? Measure, this is kind of redundant with step three, measure plant height every four days and record and chart. So this isn't bad, but why four days? Four days is a very abstract kind of out there con, uh, you know, time, which really I'm not quite sure why it, the number four was just picked out of everything else that was possible. So please make sure you have a relevant reason why you picked four days and talk about this in your background. I picked four days because even if you say I honestly didn't know but I assumed that four days would be enough to see some type of a change within the plant's height. You could say something like that. Maintain fertilizer schedule. Uh, again, what does this mean? It, it really, altogether, two and four are kind of irrelevant there. Um, unless you have some specifics to get with her. Once the plant gets large enough, put the K or um, once the plant or once plants get large enough, put cage and stick in for support. I have no idea what this is. I think you mean the plant's going to get large and then you're going to use the cage or like a wire or something to hold it up. But without a diagram or anything, again, I only know this because I've seen gardens. But that brings up another point here. How long are you going to do this for? And I don't think I saw anywhere how long, but on your table, it looks like you're talking 12 days. That's only two weeks. And I have to say, do you know how long it takes to grow tomatoes? It takes a very long time to grow tomatoes. And so there's a lot of issues with this lab. And I don't quite know, you know, if this is something you're really struggling with or if this is just because there was a, it was a late paper and it was tried to, you know, rush to completion. But unfortunately, this is the last bit of feedback I'll be able to give you on this. So please make sure you take what I'm saying and try to add some improvement to this. Thank you. Okay, and we're going to research this one now. How does the age of a horse affect how often they have bowel movements? I think we talked about this at one point. This is a very interesting lab, and frankly, this would be a very hard to control lab. But again, it's your research project, so you are the scientist. Let's see what you've got here. Um, I would make sure this is a professional paper that you write research question, not RQ. Remember, your moderators live overseas, and quite often they don't understand a lot of terminology and slang that we use here in the United States. So you are, if you keep it professional, everybody in the world should be, that speaks English should be able to understand your paper. Now, my first thought when I look at this is it doesn't look very complete at all. And this is an issue because I also don't want to spend a whole lot of time giving advice on something that where there isn't really a whole lot for me to do except I see a whole section. I'll get to that in a minute. So just to give you the overall thought on the layout, there's definitely a lot here that looks like you still need to complete on this. So uh, overall, I like that you have a heading in front of each of these and your sections above it there. I like that you've italicized. I would recommend just putting these in boldening or emboldening these uh, headings here. It just makes it stand out, but you don't have to. I do like that you made it stand out and you're being consistent with all of these except materialist, you put a colon after it. So it's kind of like Try to be consistent with how you create your headings if you're going to do that. Um, and then you have your data, but let's go ahead and take a look and see what you have. Now, for this research question, um, I would expect if I look at your background, which I haven't looked at your background yet because I'm trying to be unbiased with this, I would expect with a research question like this that you would first connect, why did you do this lab? And make us personally engaged with it. Then I would also expect that you tell us straight up um, how this is relevant with your lab, your data, how can this make the world a better place? What can it do and how is it relevant? 
So we would want to see this. The other thing is we obviously need to see you've done your research on horses. Well, can you tell us about the age of a horse? I think they live in their 20s, if I recall correctly. But what can you tell us about age and what it does to them over their lifetime? Talk about the lifespan of a horse and aging horses and things like that. Are they similar to humans? Some animals get really good up until old age, and then they just suddenly go downhill really fast. It isn't a gradual thing at all. Um, you can talk about everything that's relevant to their lifestyle and ages and, and really spend some time telling us. But then that brings us to bowel movements. You're obviously going to want to tell us about their diet. Do they eat the same food all day? Do they just eat hay? Do they eat a variety of other things? Um, all of this is relevant to talk about, and that brings us to bowel movements. It's a pretty disgusting topic, but it is relevant. Uh, when their bowel movements come out, how do you measure this? Well, in your case, if you're doing frequency, you're really going to have to establish that you have a methodology for recording this, which I have no idea how you're going to do that, but again, this is for you to figure out as a scientist here. So let's see what you have in your background. You said, I have been taking care of horses for a year now. I've noticed older horses defecate less. Thank you for not saying poop, by the way, because other papers I've seen over the years, people will say poop and pee and, you know, in, and worse uh, uh, slang terminology. Uh, this is a professional paper, and so defecation is an anatomical term. Thank you for saying that. I've noticed that horses defecate less. Okay, that is a good observation. And then you are very blunt, a lot less. That's very relevant. Most horses are supposed to have bowel movements at least 10 times a day, whereas older horses defecate only four times a day. Um, where is, I assume you heard this from your training and just anecdotes, but please let us know. Uh, cite this, find a source for this, or if it is just an anecdote, a story that you have heard over the years, make sure you let us know this here. But right now you're establishing the scientific method. You have an observation, you have questions you're asking here. Okay, so rephrase some of this and dig in a little deeper, but you're on the right track here. I like this. Piqued my interest because I didn't expect there to be that much of a difference. So this is an observation yet again, and you are questioning. After observing four of the horses at my barn, who were relatives in age, okay, thank you for establishing the ages here. I'm not sure what, oh, four, uh, I'm not sure why you have 27 plus 26, and then in a separate bracket, 15 plus 17. Perhaps you can explain to us what these are, or if you say ages are ages are 15, 17, 26, and 27. I, I just think about what I was saying there. They had similar diets, however, each group had a big difference no matter how much I was moving from their paddocks. Oh, so that's, I like this. You are directly involved with these horses. That should be much easier than free-ranging horses here. Okay, well, that is a very similar thing. Um, obviously, we're going to need to, you, you've got a lot more to talk about here, obviously, so please make sure you dig deeper into this. And uh, I like how you talked about here that, um, that they have similar diets, but really, are you measuring how much these horses are eating? And I would assume that you would need a baseline where you're, making, you're recording how much is going in and how much is going out. But if they're living in a paddock, especially in the winter months like now, this should be relatively easy to establish. Hypothesis, the age of the equus calibus, I assume is the horse, so I put in uh, parentheses after this, the common horse or the American horse, whatever you would call it as a common name, but put this in parentheses here. You want to list it, like we talked about in ecology, of proper species terminology. And the frequency of bowel movements over a span of 12 hours. Okay. Um, This, is a, this isn't what you believe is going to happen. This is just a research question rephrased more specifically. So think about this here, okay? The age is the independent variable. I agree. Um, by the way, what are the ages of the horse? You might want to list these here, the ones I, you got these four, but again, might want to put some more here. And that's the thing, since you only have four horses, if that's what you're using in your IA, you're probably going to want a lot more data just because four horses and five trials each is not really enough to establish a solid trend. But you could justify it by having a lot more um, trials of each of these. So that is something to think about. Okay. Dependent variable bowel, and you could do a t-test, by the way, with that. Dependent variable bowel movements in a day. Okay. Uh, I would put just like number in a day here or something, but that works. Um, okay. 
material list. And here's the procedure. This is where it's, uh, I, I mean, there's probably going to be a lot more to this than what I'm seeing here. But let's see, you said feed the horses, put them out. What does put them out mean? Again, don't be vague like this. And when you say feed the horses, what are you feeding them? How much are you feeding them? Are you measuring how much? Are you ensuring? Do you have a method to make sure they get the same amount? Or if one horse gets more than the other, how are you measuring this? Okay, as long as you have a way, um, just be a lot more specific than this. Also, what are you feeding them? Is it just hay? Is it something else? Is it from the same source? I uh, don't know. Are they drinking the same amount of water too? Like, uh, just something to think about. Here you're saying wait 12 hours. And again, I have to say, why 12 hours? Why not? What if you have a horse that eats its food in the morning and doesn't defecate until the next morning? So this is where, like, you know, you're assuming the horse is going to defecate within a 12-hour period. I guess I'm not sure how this is controlled. And if you work at this paddock for only this long, I certainly can understand that. But this is where, for your science paper, I would say this is not a very controlled experiment with 12 hours. You're probably going to want a 24-hour period or something like that. That's why this lab was hard to begin with. Uh, before starting afternoon chores, um, I'm not sure we need this here. This is your personal life here if you have afternoon chores. But um, I would start off by, like, early in the morning, count how many piles of feces are in the area. Okay. So you have a way to measure your counting piles of feces. However, my big glaring issue with this that is not controlled at all is uh, all fecal matter piles, I would assume, all piles of feces are different sizes, diameter, height, mass. There are ways to get around this. In fact, I know this is gross, but if you are collecting these and you're working at a horse barn, I know this is crazy, but you always could consider getting a box and throwing the stool in the box and putting it on a scale and weighing it and then just doing that and then throwing it out of course but then just weighing them or something even in a bag I don't know but that is even more controlled than what you're saying here so you've got to come up with a method your methodology right now is very uh, is very weak and that brings me to the other you're missing a constant section you have no list of the things you need to control that you're trying to control okay and by the way, I noticed you have the age groups of horses here, and I like that you have it. You really need this up in the independent variables section. All right, and don't you think the food is material too and all that? Absolutely it is. That brings us to the next one here, data collection. I like that you have this here, but the problem is your table is not well labeled. Uh, I assume these are the ages, but nowhere up here do you say age of the horse. And I assume these are different days, different trials, which is good. If you want to do a t-test, you're going to need at least 10 days, though, over each of these. And that would be very good data, by the way. You at least get 10 days. Um, but the problem is, above these here, you have no title for the amount of fecal matter weighed or something. So your table not, is not doomed. It just needs a little bit of tweaking, okay? If you can do these things and fix it, you actually might not have the best lab, but you certainly, well, at least with you know, unless you put a lot of time into this, but you can certainly have a really good lab here. But right now, there's just a lot that's missing here, especially the constant section. You said, not keeping this, I don't know how to disclose bias. In a perfect world, you'd be able to put these horses however possible. This is correct, but again, there are things you cannot control, so you as a scientist need to at least talk about things that are possible, and then talk about it in your discussion section at your at the end of your conclusion how you could have made this better or issues with sources of error that is the whole point to the conclusion section so you do what you can do with your horses and whatever you can't do you just talk about it in your conclusions okay so you're right there are a lot of variables and you're right why do you think dietary scientists have such a hard time i mean really why is it Every few years you hear dietary restrictions seem to change a little bit. And it's because scientists really struggle. Like, does high cholesterol cause heart disease? Or does a large amount of sugar cause diabetes? Like, you're right. There are a lot of variables. And you are a scientist, so you now are aware of this. And you need to discuss this in your conclusion. However, you need to do everything practical up here to at least see if you can get data. And right now, there's just not a lot of control for this, okay? So please think about what I just said there. It's very good, and hang on to these ideas, but do what is practical 
and certainly weighing their stool is practical. Measuring piles really is not, you know, it's, it's really not a very good way to control it. That's the only problem I have, okay? Also, I could throw another thing, but what about when stool dries out? Aren't you assume some horses are constipated and some are not? Might that affect the mass? You do what you need to do, but again, there's going to be a little bit of variation in here. You are only here to do what you can do with this. All right, if you need help or anything, let me know. I'll be available Monday or anytime you need to offer assistance, but this is your one piece of formal feedback on the design. Have a wonderful afternoon.